Yes, everybody, just a few hours from kickoff between the Oklahoma Sooners debuting their 2015 season against the Akron Zips from the Mid-American Conference. And no, the game will not be on regular TV, won't be on cable. You know, the only way you're going to find this game is if you're at the game, if you watch it on pay-per-view, or if you listen to it, okay? That's the only way you're going to find this game, okay? Listening to it on the radio is probably what a lot of people will do. Because the pay-per-view costs for OU Akron a ridiculous fifty-four ninety-five to watch one game, and it's supposed to be a blowout. At least that's what Vegas thinks. Thirty-one point favorites are the Oklahoma Sooners uh, over the Akron Zips, and of course, a lot of curiosities by Sooner fans um, entering this game and for the twenty fifteen season for that matter. Probably number one is Baker Mayfield, you know, the quarterback from Texas Tech a couple of years ago who didn't get to play last year for OU. But he'll make his debut, and a lot of people think he's all that. Um, even after tonight, we may not know if he's all that terrific of a quarterback, again, because you're going against a team that you should be able to beat handily. Of course, it's also the debut for Lincoln Riley's air raid offense, which is going to throw quite a bit, and it's going to utilize those running backs to be receivers from time to time as well. And my number one thing for Oklahoma, and I do think tonight is a good barometer for this, how will Oklahoma do after the catch? Can they run and catch? And you know, Sterling Shepard last year might have been the only player who really fell under this category, okay? Uh, because when it came to running and catching the ball, which this air raid attack is going to demand, the Sooners were not very good. So this is the area you really have to watch for, especially when guys like Mixon and P. Ryan have an opportunity to catch the ball out of the backfield or, out, or lined up in the slot. We're going to see how these guys do in that regard. And, of course, another curiosity, too, is Joe Mixon, you know, the guy that, you know, was fortunate to have gotten another shot to play at Oklahoma after last year for the major trouble he got into off the field, got suspended for the year. But now we get to see how the five-star recruit from California does. Tremendous quickness, outstanding speed, one of the most talented athletes on this squad. And we get to see him debut tonight. And, of course, how has that hamstring done for Sterling Shep you know, Shepard since injuring it in Week 8 last year in Ames, Iowa? That's going to be a curiosity. And, of course, we get to see the um, other receivers, Deron Neal, and we'll also see D.D. Westbrook from the junior college ranks make his start in this air raid attack. Um, offensive tackles. This is something to watch for if you're watching this game tonight, okay? Whether you're at the game or watching on pay-per-view, look at the tackles, okay? You know, you have Josiah St. John, a senior on the right side, and you have a redshirt freshman, by the way. That's right, he's making his debut as a starter um, on that left side. Um, you know, in the form of Orlando Brown. So, redshirt freshman going on the left side. Really watch how they do against these Akron guys. You know, a couple of these Akron defensive players are former Ohio State transfers. You know, Savon Pittman and uh, Jamal Marcus both used to play for the Buckeyes. And uh, Cody Grace, the defensive tackle, he was actually an all mac player from a year ago, 5'11", 275. You know, he'll be a decent challenge tonight. I mention this because if Oklahoma can't block these guys, especially in pass protection, then it's a bad sign for the rest of the season, and it's especially a bad sign next week in Knoxville against a Tennessee team who have a pair of defensive ends who were double digits in QB sacks a year ago. So if you can't handle Akron, you sure as hell ain't going to be able to handle Tennessee. Now, what can you expect from Akron offensively? Well, if it's anything like we saw last year for Terry Bowden's squad, you're going to see a lot of throwing because they threw a heck of a lot more than they ran, even against teams that didn't really specialize um, in in a uh, you know in a in a rush in a pass type defense okay um, Akron still threw the ball against those teams that knew how to stop the run first so it's it's one of those things where where Akron was going to do or die their season by throwing the football this year that might change As a matter of fact you know Terry Bowden's been pretty you know quiet he's been tight lipped about who he's going to go with the quarterback he's got a couple of I would think decent options in Kyle Pohl who last season you know threw for 14 passes, but also threw for 14 picks. Two-year starter, or we can go with Trevon Chapman, the former Pittsburgh Panther. You know, he got kicked off uh, Pittsburgh not long ago, so now he's a part of the Akron Zips. If you're curious, Akron last year did not go to a bowl game. Looked like they were on their way to. They won four of their first six. They upset Pittsburgh from the ACC, but Pittsburgh you know, ended up finishing six and seven, so they were nothing special. And then Akron, the way they finished their season, was especially bad, losing five of their last six. But, you know, Phil Steele, who you might remember from, um, you know, the, those college football magazines, he's on ESPN as well, uh, for what it's worth, um, he says that Akron, he has them as one of the ten most improved teams this season in college football. And the coaches in the MAC actually have the Zips as high as number two in their division with 
with Bowling Green, the clear kept favorite in their division in the MAC. So, you know, the Zips are one of those teams that, you know, they return a lot of experience, you know, seven starters offense, seven starters defense. I would anticipate that if Oklahoma can handle Akron's um, defensive line, uh, they should be able to roll in this game. Um, remember, though, a lot of people thought Oklahoma State was going to roll against a MAC opponent just two nights ago against Central Michigan, and that game was tougher than anticipated as Oklahoma State needed their defense to step up, and they did in a, in a uh, victory by two scores. But again, that game uh, was in doubt for about two and a half quarters because Central Michigan from the MAC had Oklahoma State down. So, you know, it's one of those games where the Sooners, will it be a typical OU opener against a, I guess, a opponent that you might as well call no name? because it should be a romp, or will it be like Utah State from five years ago in which the Sooners only uh, won that game by a touchdown and a lot of people, including yours truly, couldn't believe it. So, big thing for the Sooners, three things tonight. Uh, see how Baker Mayfield and these receivers, if they can establish chemistry, and also, to uh, the catch and then run, you know, the run after the catch. We'll see how that works for the receivers and, this, and, and the um, running backs. Number two, Look at the look at the tackles, okay? Look at those tackles for Oklahoma and see how they're pass protecting and also see about run blocking too when the when the plays go to their side. And number three, of course, um, we'll, we'll see how Oklahoma's defense, we'll see if they've improved a lot, a little or not at all when it comes to coverage. Again, because I do I still think Akron, um, even though there could be changes as far as the way they call plays, they might run a little bit more. I I really don't think so because I think if Oklahoma does what they should, they should get up early, and Akron will really be throwing the heck out of the uh, ball. But athletic-wise, talent-wise, this should be an Oklahoma victory. 31 points is quite a bit. Um, so boy, I, have, I have been teeter-tottering on, on what to go with. I'll, I'll say Oklahoma covers the 31, but barely. And if you're a Sooner fan, the main things besides the three points that I brought up that you need is number one, um, no major injuries, and number two, uh, see if you can get those backups into the game in the second half. If you, st- if you still see Baker Mayfield playing in the fourth quarter, and that's not a good sign at all, not a good sign. But um, hopefully the Sooners tonight will have a terrific showing, and um, we will see the true test coming up a week from tonight in Knoxville against what looks like a pretty formidable opponent in the Volunteers. But tonight it's the Zips and the Sooners, and you're a zip out of luck if you're wanting to watch this game on regular TV again it's on pay-per-view. Sunday more than likely will be my post-game show between OU and Akron. Catch you later.